taking no that's a promise, not a threat. Uppercut, season, no top, you stop breathing. Yeah, yeah, what's good, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Real Talk, where, as always, if shit's real, we talk about it. I'm your host for tonight, Pat Scorpio, the New England representative, and as always, I got my man with me. I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Yo, what it do, man? It's LB, a lot of the boss, aka Jesus Shuttleworth, the God, the Gold Artist. The world is an op out now, streaming everywhere. Ring Gang Radio.com in the building. Yes, sir. Sir, ring gigging house forever and always. And as always, I got my other man with me. I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Hey, yo, what's good, y'all? You already know who this is. Your boy King People, Digger People, Digger Box in the building. Ring Gang Radio all day. Let's go. We here. Hey, hey King People, Digger P. You know, so who's banned from the bodega this week, bruh? No bannings yet. It's it's Thursday, but somebody will probably be banned at this rate from, you know, it come Sunday. We'll see. Yes, sir. You know, and like I said, there's, oh, there's always somebody violating, you know, the, the bodega's for everyone, but people don't understand that's a privilege. You know, so, yeah, we'll just have to wait to see the Sunday who, who won't be uh, who won't be allowed in. Probably all, all probably all old boxing media will be thrown out violently from the bodega by then, but we'll see. <laughs> Facts. And last, but certainly not least, I got my other man with me. I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Hey, what's for our conscious pod, aka the West Coast Avenger number one contender preparing for liftoff. This is Ring Radio, let's fly, man. Yes, sir. Conscious pilot stays elevated above the clouds and shit. You know, saying there's no turbulence this time, so that's what's up. You know, before we get into our you know our topics for tonight, which is all about that music, you know, I just want to you know say a brief thing, you know, about the Britney Griner situation. Uh, yeah, so fuck the, it's fucked up. It's whole it's political. It's all fucked up. You know, like nine years for that, like nah, that's 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 wild, unacceptable. Uh, just have to mention that it is like, you know, I don't know what the I don't know what kind of fucking lawyers or fucking the system system is, but you know. There's no way that she should be used as a pawn to whatever fucking political games that's going on right now. I just, you know, I just have to put that out there. I know, and I know because we had a brief conversation about this, and we will have a topic on this. Trust me, probably on Sunday we'll go more into our detail. I know P has some bars for this. I know I got some stuff on this. I know my my my, my nigga LB got some shit on this. I know Pi will, you know, will rock out around everything up, you know. So. Yeah, yeah, hold, you hold, your, yeah, hold your head, Brittany. Like this is some crazy shit. Right. Like I mean, I mean, seriously. Like you know, like what, what? What? It's just all fucked up, man. Should have just been a fine and hey, you know, boot her out the country. Like, like, but whatever. Like, but yeah, we'll 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 get more into that on Sunday, man. Because yeah, that shit is that that shit is disgusting. But uh, yeah, no, back to this uh, music thing, man. So yeah, our first topic of tonight, man. You know, we're gonna have a discussion on who dropped the better album in the in the year of our Lord two thousand. You know, Y two K year. Y two K, yeah. Everything, you know, you know, that was a that was a year where pretty much every album in the previous year, especially Buster Rhymes was doing this. Like, there's only one year left. You know, niggas was putting all types of futuristic shit in their in their songs and the skits and shit like that. For, forcing it, 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 it gave hip hop a whole end yeah, of and the world after, theme. The Y two K shit, yeah, yeah, and bam, nothing happened when the when it when it flipped over into one one two thousand. <laughs> yeah, go figure. Yeah, that was a uh, that was that it was hilarious. I was I was fully expecting, you know, things to explode. I remember because my parents had a whole party, you know, so we were all expecting you know shit to like my computer to explode, my TV to turn the light on some Terminator shit. You know what I mean? Damn, y'all was some creative, imaginative, Muppet baby ass niggas for all of that shit. Like. <laughs> Muppet baby. My thing is, there's different time zones. So I was little, I was young, I was like, you know, I was like 11, 11 maybe. I was like, different time zones. I just thought, how can something happen? You know, there's so many different time zones. But, okay. Yeah, the, I mean, the whole concept of, you know, one one years and another year, and then there's other countries that are still in the other year. Yeah. That, that's it, that shit, that shit, that shit is still mind blowing. But not as mind blowing as that Y2K shit. That shit was. It was, just, it was just everywhere. Like niggas kept on referencing in the music, all types of shit. But music, cartoons, every, everything was movies following that theme. Like right, you know. But like I said, it came and went. You know. But you know, we still got. You know. You know like I mean, the music. You know. I mean, obviously, music started to change in the two thousands. You know. But then, but there was still at least there was still albums where niggas still had some bars. You know, had some you know high respectable beats. You know, high respectable that, that still could actually make an album. 
Yeah, it was a transitional period, but you still had right. like some hardcore hip hop elements. Right, it's especially it was kind of the the like the, it was like the boom, end of the boom bap era a little bit, kind of you know. But boom bap was going out hard, like yeah. it wasn't just going out on some like the sound like dinosaurs deceased type shit, like. Right. Yeah. Fortunately, yeah. Boom bap. St- yeah. Boom bap started getting into uh, that weird, weird. I mean, obviously, you know, like you know. Some like people like Cream and Pete Rock and all of them, like mm-hmm. they were like, they were starting to die down in the mainstream because you know Jay and Nas wasn't really using them like that, and you know they were you know and then yeah it was, it was a weird transition and then of course the Shiny Suit era was also you know was you know came to an end too yeah, yeah. yeah. and then the Soul Sample era you know a year or two later kind of took off crazy yeah yeah so yeah, yeah two thousand was this, was just like this little it know, was like a season finale of hip hop back then. Right, <laughs> like that, that's what it felt like. And yes, shout out to Marquise Johns. I have both. Bumpy is the better record. Yes, the, yes, he's absolutely correct. Yeah, let's just get into <laughs> it. Let's let's just get into it all. Salute Marquise. So yeah, we got you know two albums. Like one was pretty much we we called the like one of the last gasp of the actual boom bap era, and then one which was probably the last. We, people would say it's the last. Pro, like version of prime version of Prodigy, mm-hmm. you, know, you know we got you know Freddie Fox aka Bumpy Nux with Industry Shakedown, and then we got Prodigy dropping his debut solo album HNIC. What's and good, then, Broadway Joel? I see you in the comments. What's good, brother? Salute, salute. salute. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Well, pilot, I think you should look at the private chat real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Man, like, nah, I know this is going to be a good one. Let's pilot fuck it up. Like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is about to be an epic show. All right, let's. Yeah, all right, so, yeah. so uh, what, what, what y'all vote? Because you already know what I voted. See, nigga, that, this, this, this was hard, too. Like, cause I, I still remember the first time that, because my man Mike Nice in college. You know, because he because he was always up on some shit like I, you know that I respected, and he told me about the Bumpy Nux uh, Bumpy Nux album. I was like, I was like, damn! Like, cause he kept on, cause he kept on like he was going hard about it. So he burned me a copy. Remember those days? <laughs> oh my god, it's dark. I had bought that fucking damn. I, I had to buy that shit when it came out. I remember the the, the case mm-hmm. and had the little comic book in it. Like, yeah, that's what's up. Yo, and I was just like, oh shit, you know, I mean, I mean, Bumpy already let niggas know off the top, you know, first you had that live at the Roxy shit, you know, and then after that 24 hours just hit you in the fucking head and then it's pretty much that shit just took off like, you know, like I said, the fun things too, it wasn't like Freddie Fox was on some lyrical miracle shit. I mean, he was, I mean, he was, the lyricism was there, but what made that album so special was that nigga had a lot of anger, anger and the fucking aggression and he had dope beats. And he ripped every single one of those tracks, you know. Whether you had the one-liners or you had, you know, or you had like, you know, the, you know, or you had some grimy ass punchlines. Like that, that, see, that was that was like, uh, like it was just hitting you over the head. And you know, and this nigga also has a voice too. Like, but Freddie Fox has like one of the perfect rap voice. It was just, you know, uh, you know, in the vein of MOP. You know, it's just it's just hard for like no fucking reason. Ripping shit left and right, man. I, I, I love it, that album. It, he has one of the most commanding mic presence you'll ever hear on a record. You can put a thousand niggas on a record, you're gonna hear Bumpy Knuckles part. That shit gonna stand out. Yeah, and you remember it took, like I said, you know, like, like I said, I mean, the, the lyricism, like I said, it wasn't mind blowing, like, like it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like some next level shit, but it, it, it fit. Like he was still spitting, like there was still hard bars. You know, it's like, and it was just like, I was like, God damn, like, it's, it's like, damn, like this shit, like this was shit that was kind of missing, like, because the type of album that he made was was pretty much like, was almost like gone in two thousand. Oh yeah, yeah, that was because no. yeah. that was like that was in the tail end of the shiny suit era. You know? Yeah, yeah, it was that and everything, like, and, and friends too, because he got he had some heavy hitters on that shit, like you know, Cream, Pete Rock, Alchemist, Diamond D. Yeah, he had a superstar lineup of producers, and they all laced them with they all laced them with heat. Oh man, so it, it, it's, yeah, like in furthest too, because it had been a while 
So when we when we're actually talking about this shit internally, like, yeah, I, I need, I, I, it's like I need to run this shit back because it, it had been years since I actually listened to that shit. And I was just, and I listened to, it, I was like, damn, bro, yo, for, yo, for, yo, this nigga should have really been something, you know, should have been something more, like, you know, than what he was, though. But sometimes there's sometimes the stars align for that, you know, for that one album, and and that it's a and it's a and it's a real classic because it aged very fucking well. You know, yeah, man. Industry take over. It was that shit, man. LB, I know. Let's say, the, the, and this is one of your favorite. So yeah, I want you to take over, man. Just let, you know, let niggas know about the greatness of Industry Shakedown. But it's a classic record. Yeah, it's, it's a classic album. Like <clears throat> it's one of the rare albums that was presented as a uh, classic hip hop album, and it delivered. Right. And like we were saying earlier, it's you know it signified a a moment in time in hip hop where things were transitioning. Hip hop was getting more worldwide. It was getting a more modernized production sound. You had the Pharrells and the Manny Freshes emerging. You had more yes, different types of styles. Timberland was getting bigger. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. So to have somebody who had a good, solid underground following, and off the strength for that militia verse, yes, yes, that if you was listening to hip hop and you seen how, um, and the video was all on Rap City, yeah, yeah, it was. Freddie Fox killed that third verse, like mm-hmm. Jesus, like to to the point where he he killed it so much the remix didn't even matter. <laughs> also facts And the remixes He had I think um, I think Lady of Rage Who else was on Dub C was, Dub C was on that Yep you, you had some fucking Heavy hitters on that Damn remix uh, mm-hmm. So um, imagine that Where you body something So hard Like no one even Bodies it even harder In the remix And everybody still Did their thing So yeah Close right. Yeah he closed That fucking record off So now he comes out With an album <clears throat> Where he has the elite production squad and he's getting the best beats from the best. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll get albums where, and you know, during that era, you would have rappers would get, oh yeah, I got a few Pharrell beats. I got to be a Timberland beat. Right. But niggas was getting like leftover beats. It was getting the damn, you weren't getting the mace while you looking at me beat. You, you, you weren't getting those. You was getting other shit. Like um, perfect example is like, like a uh, uh, guys like uh, major figures. Yes, yes, yes. They didn't get the best Pharrell beats, but then on the other hand, Clips got them fire Pharrell beats. <laughs> Marquis the Swiss Beach jump dumpster. I almost forgot to, yeah. forgot to mention that nigga. Yeah, we didn't even mention his ass. So <laughs> yeah, the worst, the worst hooks ever. The worst choruses, bro. Yeah, yeah, because so all that shit was emerging and just bumpy knuckles. Freddie Fox was just on some like, you know what? I'm gonna give you pure masculine raw MCing, right? On some grimy shit. It's like Keith Murray with steroids. Yeah, <laughs> and, and the and the bars he says like, and the, and less you, of the miracle lyrical miracle shit that Keith Murray sometimes got on. Yeah, it was just more straight up like. Like he even starts out the album. Who's a six foot bald head nigga from New York with the gangster walk, the gangster talk, feeling them kind of. I'm wildin', I'm illin', I don't give a fuck about you, and that's my feeling. Like that's the whole hey. vibe he's on. Like, and he just has line after line like that. Like he even makes fun of like the current shit at the time. Like on one song, he's like, "I'm sick of Nori and his what what what." Write some rhymes, nigga. I get that shit up, up, uh, up. Uh, like, <laughs> yeah, that and also, I think you also went bleak too on that shit. The bleak shit. He's like, yeah. I'll beat you. I'll beat you in your face. I'll beat you to. I'll beat you in your face. I'll, I'll beat you. I'll beat you to your face is mad ugly like biz. If you ever open your mouth to ask me what a myth bleak is, <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was super hard. Yeah, this nigga was just snapping. Like, I remember one shit he said. Um, I make it look nasty, like two niggas kissing, like. Yes. 
And he and he'd even switch up his flow, like nah. He, no, he switched up his flow on that um MCs coming. Yeah, the MC. MCs he, he, he brought like, like an old school, like some old school, like eighties or nineties rap with that shit. Yeah. And he killed it. With he that killed shit. that. That's one of my favorite tracks off the album. Not gonna lie, he, he brought it that. Like he, the low points are just maybe a few tracks are just average, and they only really look average because they're compared to. The best of the best type shit Right Like you could legit say If someone once was like Yo where's the album where I can hear the best Pete Rock Best Primo Best Alchemist Beats Mm -hmm. And you're like you know what You need to hear Industry Shakedown Yeah Cause you legit have some of Pete Rock's Best fucking beats on here Bumpy Knuckles baby Like Yeah yeah, I mean that, that that's that's well that's I mean if I had to rate that song that, that shit is a ten. Like that's yeah, a, that's a standout, 10. fucking pure ten, and and it's the chorus. Who got the hardest MC style ever created? Bumpy knuckles, baby, bumpy knuckles, baby. Yeah, and I'll blow a nigga chest out to keep me motivated. Bumpy knuckles, baby. Like, <laughs> like that album is a fucking masterpiece. Like honestly, to me, it's a ten. It's a classic. Um, the highs are just too fucking high. They're like, the highs are like the goddamn tiger uppercut at the the third bar type. Shit. Right, like part of my life was one of them, and also the title, the uh, the title track, "Industry Straight Down" itself. That was that was another Industry. And I never put my two guns down. Why is that? Cause I need them. Like the way that <laughs> they could just talk, like. <laughs> Like he sounds like if your dad was one of those old civil rights type of real nigga fathers, yeah. and then he found like his uncle's records and DJ, and he was like, you know what? Let me give this rapid shit a, a shot. And you like, yo, chill, pops, like nigga, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> But then you come back and later and that nigga spitting and that nigga sound like some bumpy knuckles. You're like, oh shit, what the fuck? Like, like you yeah. just start calling up your homeboys and shit. Like, yo, my pops is spazzing. Like, like he murking this, like, like, I don't know how this nigga got primo beats in here, but he's doing <laughs> that. Like, it's just the vibe. Like, I could go all day about the album. Like, the, the MOP collab. Yeah. I'm cold and icicles in Poland. Niggas hate to see when Bumpy get mad. Should I be holding? I won't hesitate to blow, blow, uh, blow out to colon. Yeah. Well, the, the, the shit he was saying, like, I'll run you down, beat your ass. And... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like pure aggressive, like lyrical hip hop on some street shit. But he ain't even talking about like. Like yeah, I'm moving bricks. This that it's just real grown man. Like I'm a big ball headed motherfucker with hands. I got two nines and I can rap. Yeah, now and, what? And and, ju- and just to give a little background, and, and if you wonder like why was he so aggressive? Because you know Freddie Fox has been out since like the '80s, like the mid '80s. You know, and Dude used to be down with Flavor Unit with Queen Latifah and them. You know, but they sh- but when he his first album. Uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, the, the first album you know he did back in the eighties, and then the second album, which was done I think in the early nineties, was like shelved, you know, for like really no reason, you know. So then after that, you know, dude just was just on doing cameos uh, on the OC second album. Joel's is on there. Uh, Gangstars LB mentioned uh, Boogie Down Productions, Naughty by Nature. Dude was uh, yeah, dude was just doing cameos, and he was bodying those cameos, you know. Like I said. And then, like I said, in this album too, because obviously, you know, because back then, you know, going independent was not like was like a rarity. Like, you know, like if you wanted a, if you wanted the album to pop, you know, you had to sign with a major label. So yeah, because like, the the whole theme is just awesome. Like he was the industry's best kept secret. Right. Like they was like doing everything not to let you hear how dope this dude was. Right. And he had that vibe. And so like like I'm saying, so when it delivered, you're like, oh shit. Mm-hmm. I, I see why like they didn't really if you listen to the industry shakedown song, he goes into detail about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh but they wanted uh they asked me they asked me to be in the Blaze battle, but not consider me one of the fifty great. 
So I sat back, reviewed my tapes, and said, "Listen, I sell more records and sell niggas without a deal. I made more money, plus my diamonds is real. That you were the battle for a rolly that I could take anyway. You better leave me the fuck alone, Bumpy Knuckles. Don't play like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that nigga. Yeah, like I said, just just straight spazzing, man. Like yeah, he poured everything into this album and just made it just it made it a pure hardcore classic. Like I mean, and like like I said." If, if if this was an album that was released maybe three years earlier, then honestly, it probably you know he probably would have you know had a little run there like here or there, three or even four years earlier. You know, it's but. possible, but the shiny suit ever was at its peak, mm-hmm. so I don't know. Right, because so, remember he was kind of in that lane Cormega was finding himself in. Right. So yeah, like I said, you know, an independent album with all those heavyweights on there because they all knew that you know that he was the truth. You know that dude, he was that dude. And then, like I said, you know, you have like you have like this rare, this. I don't even want to call it an era classic because it's not. I mean, it's an actual. It's aged well. Like you know, just re-listening to that shit, it's just like it took me back. Like that shit. That shit is a legit hip hop classic. And it, and it needs to be mentioned more. Like because I'm tired of. It being mentioned as like an underrated or low key, it's it's an actual classic album. Like, you know, people people got put respect on Bumpy Nux on this album, like because he he killed that album from beginning to end. Like, there's no, I mean, even like, uh, I mean, probably the week I can't even think of a weak song on there. Like, I mean, unless you want to talk about like one of the skits or whatever, which I don't even count an actual song or anything like that. But it's just like, yeah, I, mean, I don't think no song was probably less than an eight. <laughs> Yeah, there was no skips on that. Yeah, no. it, 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 it sounded like what what um, cannabis' first album was supposed to be. For yes. Me, at least. yes, you know I could agree with that. I, that's a good, that's a great you know comparison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Like it, it's like the hype was if if, if the hype would have delivered. Like honestly, like if you had Bumpy Knuckles, if Freddie Fox had cannabis popularity and he dropped this album. Mm-hmm. He's looked at way differently. Absolutely. And yeah, he cannabis, probably never, he never strung two thousand. My fault. My fault. Oh no, I was just gonna say, and if cannabis with his popularity would have dropped that album this good, he's com- mm. he's looked at completely different. Yep. Yeah. It's like they both was lacking the thing the other had. Yo, facts. That's that's real. AOP, you been kind of quiet, bro. Yo, spit your piece on this album, bro. The album was real dope, man. Um, I was fucking with it. See, Bumpy had me laughing throughout the whole thing, honestly. Like, he was, like, gritty, but, like, in a very hilarious way. Like, (laughs) just some of the shit he was saying just had me dying. Like, it felt like I was listening to Sheik Looch, but just, like... That's a perfect comparison. (laughs) Even even grittier. Like, even grittier and funnier. Gritty and witty. Maybe a boy, maybe a little more lyrical. It's right, funny because yeah. I had I, when I mentioned the Tyrone, I compared them to Sheik Lutz. It's, it's crazy you say Sheik Lutz because I, I swear, like I, I said the same thing on the phone the other day. Like, and, and and they're both big dudes, so it's like it it really you really see it. Yeah, Industry but, Shakedown was probably my favorite song on the album. Um, there's a lot of good shit. Twenty Four Hours was good. Uh, Intelligent Thug. Um, Bumpy Knuckles, baby, a bunch of other shit. Uh, stock in the game. Uh, I was fucking with it. It was dope. The production was slamming. I say that slamming. That's another. That's a, hey, hey, I mean, we're talking about two thousand albums, so you can use slamming. There you go. <laughs> he brought that back. I ain't hearing niggas say slamming and like. Like, wow! It needs to be brought back. Fuck it, P. I might have to start saying that shit again, nigga. <laughs> Slamming, like, damn, that just don't even sound right now. Like, I, 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 I think I say the word "fresh" more than "slamming." Like, I mean, they both good words. But... I mean, it just fit, yeah. it just fit. It fit for the for the album. It fit. That's what nah, I. It, what does, I thought. it does. I mean, you know, you're not wrong for saying it. it just right. <laughs> that shit took you back. You younger than me? That's crazy. <laughs> I should touch you, like <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, Henny God Slick. I'm riding with Prodigy. Nah, I mean, I mean, that's a good choice. And yeah, you dropped the classic too. Um, I like, I like Rob D. I'm, I'm, bi- I'm, I'm biased. I'm, I'm a prod, I'm a Prodigy guy too. But 
we can get you know say we'll, we'll touch on the prodigy shit too so yeah like, so I, I, mean, I definitely have some thoughts on that yeah i'm just reading brock's kind of bro is coming through swinging on that yeah that, that's what it was yeah basically yeah, absolutely yeah you know and then you know, marquise you know i know marquise is a hip-hop head just like we are you know because I, I know he's, sure. he's, dropped, he's dropped mad posts on hip-hop that you know yeah the gangstar record lady of rage and corrupt yeah corrupt was on that shit <laughs> yeah yeah you know, like I said, uh, yeah, it, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it, you know, like I said, it, it was, it was the album that you know, like I said, if you were, if if you were tired of the shiny suit era or the or the or the Casio piano producers doing, you know, you know, a couple keys and calling it a beat, you know, or the yeah. Bleak is what or the what what yeah. what what what, what yeah, you yeah like, or you didn't or you didn't like Nori's little run. Are people just being what, what, lazy? What? I don't know. I, I like the only thing you said about like if this would have dropped earlier. Like I, I kind of am of the opinion that it wouldn't have. Like this fit better in 2000 than it yeah. would have been 1997. Thank um, you. Like honestly, like some of the beats he would have been rapping on three years prior would have been kind of too cheesy for Bumpy. Like it probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't have taken it serious. Like you, like I don't know, gritty, gritty rhymes over cheesy ass beats. Like, eh, nah. That's the thing. Nah. Like the the songs with the chorus, like the singing choruses, or the those were the only real kind of cheesy average songs. And he only had like maybe I think one of them or two. Yeah, oh uh, yeah, there was some um, searching was one of them on this on this album. Yeah, so it's like those are the only songs I felt like. Were out of place or not out of place, but the 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 lack of songs where I think if it would have been in an earlier era, it would have came off worse. Mm. But but hold on, but you don't think like Bumpy Knuckles Baby and like Stock in the Game like that would have been the elite production any era though. Stock in the Game would have fit really, regardless. Bumpy Knuckles, maybe too. Nigga, like that's like a, a yeah. No, no, I, I just said stock in the game because I that probably like like I, I I fucked with that song a lot. I was bumping that. I, I I would put that on repeat. Stock in the game, burnt hips from block. Bumpy is my rap oh, uh they, I mean, I it's, it's, I think the production is like a one. Like um, shit. If y'all want to start comparing it to the Prodigy album, see, is it? And this is what makes up because. I mean, truthfully, as both were produced well. Yeah, like I said, I mean, as much as like I said, this was a this why I said this was a comparison when we were hard comparison when we were I talking mean, about this internally. I mean, LB, come on, every every I mean, it's Prodigy. He's got Mob D. He's got he's got um, Havoc and the Alchemist. You like that right there is kind of a cheap go too because they always going to come with the beats. Yeah, yeah but, but even then, it's like he had more songs, but then it's like. The beats were stand out to me like like bumpy knuckles songs like yeah like yeah if, if, like if yeah. he had a few like throwaway beats on the prodigy album that was just like eh, whatever like yeah but but what but look because this was prime prodigy so prodigy still ripped them in his yeah he way. still he still ripped them just like just like how bumpy knuckles still ripped those searching and you know the the yeah. average joints uh, i i would say actually no I, I won't disagree with you there um actually n- never mind because i'm thinking of the wrong word i would say that hnic is still prime prodigy but not peak prodigy if that makes any sense yeah no that makes sense yeah i can see that yeah i mean like some people some people say that like the peak was earlier some people say hell on earth was the peak yeah 95 through 90 95 to 97 is peak prodigy like that's at his absolute best right and then i mean obviously i mean murder music was still you know prime prodigy wasn't quite i mean i don't know if you i mean i've had some people say murder music was a peak prodigy i disagree simply because there were times on murder music where Havoc was going like tit for tat with Prodigy, and I'm like, oh, yeah. I mean, it was good that Havoc at least up his rap, up his rap game. So like, I didn't mind that, but Prodigy still outshined him by a little bit at least. You know what I'm saying? I always felt like Havoc would be neck and neck with this nigga though sometimes. So like, I don't yeah, know. I like Havoc hung around sometimes with him. And no, there really was some songs I I legitimately felt on Murder Music that Havoc had the better verse. 
And that's shocking because that was never the case before. Because I feel like sometimes people give Prodigy the whole Andre 3000 vibe. Big boy like, shit. Big boy shit. Yeah. No, oh, like, no. I, I don't do that. I give Big Boy his props. He so. should. Yeah. yeah, Big Boy. Yeah, Big Boy. I mean, unlike, unlike you know, Andre 3000, Big Boy was never afraid to release a solo album. And his le- the last one that Big Boy released was actually dope as fuck. And well, see, Boy, he, he, Havoc and Prodigy both released solo albums, though. Right, they did. And, and truthfully, and Havoc's and the funny thing is too, Havoc's solo albums are really underrated. But like there was just nothing on there to really. They're, they're a better them. group, honestly. Like Havoc, Havoc and Prodigy are, are a better duo of rappers than Big Boy and Andre 2000. I would just be honest with you. They are. Uh, I mean, it's not. I mean, I mean, people's like, oh, well, is there a bias? I mean, East Coast, and this is because you know LB is a Florida nigga, like I said. So it's not like you know we we'll say, oh, East Coast bias, because that was a thing. You know, that's a big thing, even today, even actually. But it was even See, a bigger I, thing. I, I would thought Black Thought was more so the Andre three thousand comparison, but I guess you could say Prodigy kind of got that too, because they're duo, they're a duo. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I you see know, what you're saying. Yeah. But, but at least but when this whole album because I know this whole album I, I was, could I could agree with Marquise the second half Havoc was better I think they put Prodigy on a weird stage yeah yeah I mean when yeah I mean, and that's the good thing Havoc upped his game as Prodigy started falling off like to the point where Havoc was probably carrying the nigga like on his albums <laughs> literally with the production and the yeah the production <laughs> yeah like dude, dude was doing, doing, dude was bench pressing five hundred, you know, in, in some of these albums, the later albums. It was like a dance corrupt type of thing too, because right around the same time when corrupt started just falling off, it's like I feel like Daz got better. Yeah, Daz put out, put out more entertaining shit. Surprising, and Daz was always seems like there's a nigga that was like good for maybe a four bars or some shit like that. If you want to, <laughs> you tried that, dude. yeah. Yo, the Daz, Daz, Daz be rapping his ass off. Man. But I see, I get what you're saying. Like that's another thing. Like whenever you put like people, always just take that one person in the duo and just make him seem like he's like night and day above the other guy, especially if the other guy make beats. Right. And it's is it's not the case, man. Right. Yeah. I mean, ha- I mean, havoc. I mean, havoc. You know, I always got his props as a producer, but as a lyricist, dude, dude, dude is too underrated in that aspect, and that also needs to change because havoc. You know, havoc is havoc is and was a lyricist for sure. But but as far as the the album H, uh, hey nigga in charge H and I C, it's a cons- like like the energy shakedown. It's a consistent album. Um, uh-huh. You could listen to it all the way through. The yeah. production's good. It got it got some standout joints on there that like are amazing. Um. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know the the hit of the album, "Keep It Thorough." Like, I mean, yeah. niggas, I, I can't even tell you how many times I heard niggas freestyle over that fucking. Beat. That, that is that is yeah. my good anthem. Anytime I'm lifting weights, that's what I'm playing. That's yeah. what I'm playing in the earbud. Shit, I, shit, I, I remember on Rap City, Ludacris ripped that shit in the booth with Big Daddy. Yeah. You know, God, I miss those days, man. Niggas don't go on. I miss those days when niggas actually go in the in the basement, nigga, and rap with you know and show what they got with big tickets. So like, okay, do I need to do I need to listen to this nigga's album or is this nigga struggle? Like, I miss those days, bro. Like, but the one thing I, I, yeah. I like about this album is uh, what did Henny guys say? Oh yeah, Daz and Have could both spit, but their counterparts were just on another level. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, another level, man. I don't know, man. Like, I mean, no, because I mean, let's be honest. Peak, peak, corrupt, and like, Daz isn't seeing the peak, absolute best version of corrupt. Let's just be honest. Yeah, because because corrupt and prodigy, they're like equals. Where you don't really put the other two up there. I mean, I I get it, but ah, damn, like, I I guess to me, I think because. They had a high. They have higher peaks, right? Yes. But overall, like, I think Daz has held his own on the albums. Sometimes sounds better. I, I guess. He, I guess he's made better valleys. solo shit. Peaks and valleys is what I always say. Mm-hmm. So yeah, because because that's the thing. Corrupt does have like one classic solo to me, where whereas Daz has like maybe three or four good like. Good ass album, so I, yeah, it's crazy. Damn, that was actually a harder, harder one to analyze than Prodigy Havoc, actually. 
Yo, it, we yo, we might need to do a future episode on the dog pound, bro. Yeah, yeah, that one's that one's coming. Like, you no, know, but with with Prodigy and this one, I mean, oh one, nah, like, fuck out of here. Hold on, you still have like two thousand solo albums, only two. Or, nah, nah. Oh, that's <laughs> that's first like. Dad's first maybe like three, four solo albums was like fire. Like, Retaliation, Revenge, get the the, the get death row album. Yeah. That's that's just damn near a classic. Um, yeah, because Dad's just, uh, like I said, I mean, Dad's put his foot in like Dad's production. Raw, Raw is a fucking classic. That's a goddamn classic. Like, like Dad's made some fucking like dope albums. Like, yeah. But yeah, yeah, we yeah right. we yeah soon we yeah we we we'll yeah we gonna get into that. Nah, we go <laughs> as far as <laughs> nah, nah. yeah. uh, Dad's first three is all right. Streets is a mother is a classic by Corrupt. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. But then it's like you you comparing a classic, you one classic to like maybe three albums that are like a nine, mm-hmm. <laughs> and you can maybe give one of those Dad's albums a classic because Raw is every bit as good as fucking um. Streets is a mother, mm-hmm. and they don't have all the damn features either. Right, <laughs> right. But yeah, so it's like, and, and, and he, it's like, and that's and that's Snoop cousin right there. Like, it, 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 corrupt got all the Snoop features. Right, <laughs> crooked eye exhibit. Damn, um, <laughs> KRS one. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. but but yeah. Um, so like, I'm really f- fucking with HNIC. I was like. Bumping it back and forth like for a minute now. Like once we got back to playing these, I'm like, oh shit. So like HNIC is back in the rotation for me. Just the elite level skill, you know, that Prodigy's rapping, and just like the production fits him perfectly as always. And it was just like it wasn't just, you know, you know, Prodigy always talked that, you know, talk that shit, but like that murder shit. But like right. he just he had some other variety that's always like you could tell like they like he had a lot of like emotional like pain in in his in his shit. Yo, look, look, like, like you can never feel my pain. Like I mean, yeah, no. that, that the last track, you, or, or besides the outro, the you can never feel my pain. Like you could like his pain. Like it's funny because I could like I'm like damn, I I could feel his pain just seeping out through this song. But he's telling me you can never feel my pain. Like that shit is crazy. Like I mean that or or Veterans Memorial was another Veterans one. Memorial, uh, the Trials of Love. Like he was talking some real. Trials of Love was was dope. Like yeah, yeah, like, that was that was that, 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 that song too. Yeah, I think that, yep. that's like the one and only appearance of, with him and his wife rapping on the same track, as far as I know. Yep, no, I think that was the only one that I can remember off the top of my head. There, I, there might have been another one, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, and even the guests themselves, they still, I mean, Twin Gambino, Nori, Big Noid, of course, Cormega, you know, and of course, the I'm, on the bench, uh, I'm on the bench, I'm on the bench, eating chicken wings and french fries. Yo, right. Cormega floated on three, yo. And then the surprising one, this was still surprising to me, you know, the, the, you know, little collab with him and BG, you know, young black, and young black entrepreneurs. BG. <laughs> Bodied that song he, like he, he did. did he did he he like yeah like he he bodied a prime prodigy on his own but it wasn't like but to be fair like it wasn't like prodigy came weak prodigy came strong but but bg just he, he, that's 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 the thing like yeah, this B- prime, B- prime prodigy had a dope verse and then bg and, just took it out the park yeah B- bg was off the run back then you know so he actually because he had to make sure he was sober to get on to, uh, although although i it's funny because i think like as great as that song is i think that's the only one where like the only song on the album where i'm like eh I'm not really feeling the beat. Like I didn't feel like Damn, that beat was smooth as fuck. You wild. I, 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 it, it, I don't know. I feel like it didn't fit. Like maybe for Prodigy, it just, it just for some reason it just didn't. I don't know. I didn't. It didn't connect for me. Ah. I mean, I, I, I mean, honestly, I understood because I mean, obviously, because you know, obviously, BG back in the day, you know, uh, you know, they were you know, they were trying to get low, low key because y'all didn't y'all y'all didn't want to see Prodigy get body by a South nigga. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, honestly, that that's, it. that's, and, that's and what it always is. And truthfully, but, that, that, and there, was, there, was, there was whole conversations. I still remember niggas talking about that shit. Like yo, there was whole conversations about that about that. Yeah, because the thing is, at the time, 
niggas weren't trying to put respect on like cash money name as far as like rapping ability wise like right it's like they begrudgingly gave juvenile respect on some like well yeah because back at that's going to be grudging it it was no 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 i'm telling you like dude, you, be, not i mean from the south nigga you no, okay no i'm just okay no okay I, I was just saying like i can only speak from my experience up here niggas love juvenile so yeah, yeah like i said because many niggas got, got you know got probably the first piece of ass you know bumping the grind to fucking back their ass up nigga. oh yeah, yeah yeah we fucked with juvenile up here <laughs> to this day they still nah, he still had to had a whole like the dragon song like you ju- like juveniles like niggas looked at juvenile on some like he made good songs but niggas weren't really on some like respecting on some lyrical shit it took niggas a while to 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 niggas to really appreciate juvenile lyricism like on some right. rapping of rapping shit because remember no one really look at cash money as no bar niggas like like yeah. shit and the, truthfully I don't, I don't think they wanted you to look to look them as bar, bar niggas like really yeah, yeah but hip-hop was different back then yeah it was. we looked at everybody on some like I mean, I mean if, if you think we thought If you think we thought very little of cash money Back then, should have thought how much Little we thought of no limit No limit, another, I was thinking That's another story altogether That's another story altogether That's another story altogether Hip hop evolved if y'all, don't, if y'all didn't have that chance To tolerate and go through No limit Y'all wouldn't even appreciate Cash Money because everybody knows No Limit. We're we're the better rappers. That's the funny thing. Like, and, nah, and not, not to me, not, not to me, dude. But, like, honestly, we could we could go a vote for vote. Like, you, yo, like, that needs to that needs that's to be a your vote. Opi- no limit yo, that's your money. opinion, pilot. Yeah. That's your opinion, but you would be proven wrong. Like, like a, a B level nigga on Bro, No Silk Limit. Shocker, oh, come on, Silk the Shocker. Dude, you picking one nigga? You picking Silk Master the Shocker? P was, Master P was not that good to me. Either. I'm just saying. Dude, C Murder is like C Murder was better, cool. C Murder was cool. C Murder yeah, had, so. has the career Turk wish he had. Mm-hmm. He got classics. Fucking Mia X is like you can literally see Mia X is just as great a rapper yeah, as all probably, the niggas. Yeah, Mac was probably the best rapper on that shit. That, that nigga was dope. Mac, Mac was raw. Fucking Soldier Slim, nigga. Like I'm naming like Western dudes Western. that are like. Yeah. All very that every bit is talented is, is it, it, it's just it was just unfortunate that Master P and Silk were the niggas that are on the front you know they were on the front lines yeah they they're the ones you know because Silk the Shock was for the ladies and shit like that so so this nigga yeah. kept his his off you know his offbeat flow nigga come with, nigga said come in at three this nigga coming at one half like that, that yeah, was the exactly no, Marquis a fiend fiend slept on a fiend another one like come fiend, on yes, like, absolutely slept you on can't. Yes. Nah, like yeah, yeah, no it, 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 ran just, fifty deep, and that's the problem. They ran fifty deep, and a lot of them were, yeah, not good. But the, the good ones, nah, were, the dude, the main six ones that they was on Vibe magazine, mystical. Source, the, they they were still look. How many niggas over in Cash Money were better than Mystical, Mia X, Snoop, and them um C Murder. Yeah, I mean, and and, 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 and fiend, and fiend, because uh, fiend was put up there too. I mean, probably just juvenile. I mean, at the time I was, I'll say juvenile was probably the one that, and then and ju- juvenile is held equal to them niggas. Yeah, like the, the, the one, I'm not gonna. I, I don't know if I could say juvenile is a better rapper than mystical. They they equal to me. Maybe Myst- mystical might be better. I give the Myst- mystical. Uh, I mean, I'll say mystical had the like, mystical had. His albums were better to listen to most of the time because Mystical, Mystical's, you know, had a, you know, nigga had a commanding voice. Nigga would just, be, yeah, yeah. Nigga had a James deep. Brown raspiness in yeah. his voice. You know where you know Juvenile was. Magnolia. See, I feel like I feel like Seymour, the life and death is every bit as classic as Juvenile, four hundred degrees. So it's like, like nah, so like niggas weren't looking at Cash Money like on some. Lyrical like bars and then going up against uh, what, prodigy. What, what'd you say was just as good as four hundred degrees? Sea murder, life and death. Top to bottom, lying. I would disagree. But hell, why? I'm kind of. Out of top you to bottom, I feel like four hundred degrees is the better album. 
it, when's the last time you heard see murder life and death it's been a while I'll admit that yeah I thought so <laughs> yeah and, and but that, that, that but that's why I put respect on BG being on there like BG held his own with the prime prodigy and, and it, <laughs> he ain't hold his own he had the better verse nigga ain't no hold his own like he well, he, nigga, he did hold his own. Like, I mean, that's, that's not hold, it's not holding his own when you got the better verse. BG Prodigy held his own. <laughs> oh, I can't Lord. say this. I can't. It's because it's the Prodigy. If this was a BG's album, I, I would say that. But BG, I think he's trying prodigy. to say that BG overperformed. Maybe. Just, and, 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 you you can say that. That was that was one of BG's. Yo, and that one, one has a video too. I, I, I think yeah. I've seen that video in a minute. B B G snap. It was like we down here. We knew P- B G could rap, but like for him having the type of energy and he just went in like that. Like B G don't always do that. Like matter of fact, like he might have a little Kodak in him in a way where there's times where like B G will just go in. Then there's times B G will just kind of just be also smooth. Well, BG had a heroin Regular problem, shit. nigga. That's the reason why. I, I, mean, I mean, there are a lot of similarities between the two. So yeah, but BG had an actual, <laughs> BG had an actual drug problem. That's the reason why. That it, hey, it is what it is. Look, I gotta evaluate the nigga while he's on that drug problem. Just like I gotta evaluate Keith Thurman performances when he's on these layoffs. It is what it is. It, it's like you just have to take it the way it is. If a nigga had a ten-year rap career. And eight of it, he was high out his fucking mind, coked out. Then I'm sorry, I gotta evaluate the eight, nigga. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, are, are we just gonna forget about it? <laughs> no, and, but- especially when you put out classics during them eight years. So it's like, nah. <laughs> No, but yeah, but yeah, no, but yeah, BG. Yeah, it's funny how BG sparked that little side conversation, but it's all good because that's my that's what happens, you know, you know. But like I said, because y'all, y'all were respecting the South and, and the irony is the South run hip hop now. So uh, okay, I'm not, before I go off on that, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not even gonna be drawn oh, into that. Don't get him, don't get him started. Nah, I'm just, I'm just Boy, saying, that that. I'm not saying this for the for the better or for the worse. I'm just saying. It is what it is. It's, it's discussions like that. Twenty two years ago is why hip hop the way it is now. And and niggas is like, we'll never let you get it back. Wow. Oh <laughs> lord. <laughs> but the only thing that I probably didn't like about HNIC is like well, there was a little bit too many skits. Yeah. So Jeez. They they, they could have cut down a couple. Say that for the murder music of uh movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's the difference between two albums for me. Like, uh, HNIC had a little bit, well, not a little bit, they had pretty much a lot more filler than uh, Injury Shaker. Yeah. yeah. You see, I, I see, I don't mind skits. I mean, I think the only album I ever I ever was like, okay, there's enough skits was Method Man's second album. I think that was the only album I said, okay, there's too much fucking skits going on in this shit. You know? Dude, I'm uh, usually somebody that really doesn't like skits unless they're like, I don't know. It's it's it's, it's got to be above and beyond for skits, or I just but, fucking skip. Yeah, them. I mean, but I mean, mobs always had the skits in, so that's why I didn't mind. Like to me, it was just part. Of, it was just part of the uh, part of the the creative process, so I didn't mind that. Yeah, because I mean, you see how he had to lean on me at the end. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm the I'm the H and I C. I'm not the end to get charged. Let's, let's, let's go only, get something to eat. Yeah, <laughs> there's only one skit I will like forever. Like I'll always listen to no matter what. And I won't skip it. And that's big puns packing a mac because it's just too funny to me. <laughs> I, <laughs> Other than that, eh, gotta be in the mood for him. And then also another thing to mention about this album: the one thing about, like, I mean, obviously, you know, a lot of these albums do have some unreleased shit, and this album had some unreleased shit. But the one unreleased song on there that I wish they actually put on there, the one that used the Anita Baker sample, I think it was called Anita of all things. You know, I was like. You know, I was like, damn, that shit. If that, that shit should have really been it, because that shit could have probably been a single. And I was like, one, and I think I remember that I came across that shit on Napster, like maybe a little bit after the album came out. Like, you know, I was just like, old nigga. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's old nigga mentioned in Napster. And I was like, god damn, why wasn't this shit on the fucking album? Like, this shit was. Yeah, too dope. It, it was the Hey A Z of, of his era. It, it was. It was. <laughs> That now you can make me look up Anita because I ain't hear that in years. Like, damn. 
Yeah, and it, yeah, I, I, I was like, damn, man, I love because it, it shit was smooth. Like this is, you know, I mean, Prodigy, uh, Prodigy, whatever, was flowing over that Anita Baker sample. I was like, God damn, this should have. I was like, why didn't they put this on the fucking album? Like that shit, that shit would have been. I mean, sample, sample clearance. Mm. Yeah, that's what. Uh, that's how it always goes. You have, I mean, I think I remember Havoc did the same shit with like they sampled a Prince song, and that was the same shit that happened. You can't, yeah. you can't sample Prince songs. <laughs> Another one, if you remember. um Ah, uh, that it used yeah, to be yeah, on yeah. all the Clue um stadium series, uh, that Raekwon and um that Ghostface. Uh, my my my, they took the very white sample out of there because they, they couldn't clear it. Yeah, but that song was hard though. Yeah, I think I, think I remember that too. Like I made my own copy of all the original songs with the original beats. You know, and I think I made my own copy of it because, like, that shit was just too, like, yeah, I, there was no reason why songs with that, you know, that, that that were going that hard, they should be taken off. So I, I was like, man, I had to put down, I had to put that shit, make my own deluxe versions of that shit. <laughs> that era, yeah. Oh, I feel you. So, so after everybody, so I think the pilot, you said your thoughts on the album, did you, or I can't remember? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I think, you know, in terms of a more qual, uh, I think I would lean towards industry shakedown. By oh wow! A little bit, you know, by, by a little tiny bit. Yeah, yeah. Me, uh, me. It was. I mean, I and I had to lean towards Prodigy album. I and not and not and not. It was just. I mean, because like I said, I mean, I I I played it more than I did industry shakedown, and I love industry shakedown. But I played that Prodigy album a lot more because I'm a big Mob Deep fan, you know. You know, like I said, I mean, I'm I'm, ne- I'm never mad about not listening to you know Freddie Fox album, but that project album, like you know, that shit that shit was just too dope. Like that shit it was just another dope release by the Mob Deep crew. So I was just like, yeah, I have to fuck with it because I was playing it so much back then. So damn, so we we probably gonna be split on the podcast then. What's What's good, Lone Star Steph? Uh, much love. Uh, salute, uh, salute. And Lone Prodigy's Star. album, uh, Prodigy's album, better indeed. Me too. Big Mob Deep fanatic myself. Good to hear, clever. <laughs> um, for me, I'm also gonna go with Prodigy. Although I'll tell you this, I rate both albums a nine out of ten. So it's one of those. It's a toss up that could go either way. Um, definitely can't be mad at anybody that picks Industry Shakedown. Me, I personally lean towards uh, HNIC only because I feel like the highs are just yeah, the highs are just peak prodigy and it's just yeah it's a little yeah. bit of bias but it is what it is so i'm just slightly go with hnic yeah oh yeah of course we all know you you know what you do. yeah in the industry shakedown all day like yeah mm-hmm. i feel like that album's a 10 and the prodigy album's like a good like nine um if they was given the same amount of tracks i feel like It'd be even more one-sided, right? But then I, I think the singles too. I mean, I mean, Prodigy's lead single hit more than Freddie Fox's uh, single. I mean, he's a big artist. I, I, I'm trying to remember what was um, Freddie Fox single on that. Like, I can't was remember it? him having a single. There, there the was one. Um, which one? Was I don't even remember a video or anything. Where? For industry shake there there was a lead single. I just don't remember which one it was. I don't know if it was real nigga shit or <sighs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, uh, real nigga shit was hard though. Hold on, hold on. Let, let me let me rewind that for a minute, LB. You said if given the same amount of tracks, they they would like. You said bumpy knuckles would shit would go harder if it was the same amount of tracks. Is that, is that what you said? Nah, I didn't say that. Something, what did you say? You said I said something. it would be like even more like it would be more obvious that Bumpy Knuckles got the better album. Oh, uh, Prodigy had twenty two tracks and in and Bumpy Knuckles had twenty. Had twenty. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say so. I don't have like <laughs> one, and Prodigy had more skits and shit, so he probably had less songs. Yeah, because it's, it's the skits too, though, on Bumpy Knuckles shit. Like he has skits and shit. Right? Yeah, like the DJ Rook, uh, Ruckus shit, and you know, and then the live of the. Rush. I don't know. The Prodigy album just seemed longer, but it, it, yeah. it was longer. It was longer. 
And, and, and plus, I mean, there are, there, are, there are definitely more guests on the product because, you know, it ain't a Mob Deep album without the Mob Deep crew on there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, which was cool. Like, it, I don't feel like the guests were overdone, but yeah. you felt the guest presence, which was good. Like, because, like, you had good collabs and everything. And, um, right. Freddie Fox just kind of kept it dolo for the most part. But I just honestly, I feel like both albums are classic like it just it's, it's yes, like sir. the whole Jigga DMX thing we had the other day like DMX classic album is on a it's just a higher level of a classic like right if, if, if we was to assign a masterpiece 100 points like Bumpy Knuckles is just closer to that 100 than, than HNIC for me and I think a part of it is because he's better at his lane than I believe, or he's more consistent at his lane than what Prodigy could do. And Prodigy's like elite at his lane. Right. Like, and I only say this because I just think verse for verse, Bumpy Nichols is just a better, more dynamic rapper than Prodigy. Yeah, I mean, Prodigy, Prodigy always had, you know, had, I mean, they flow different too. Freddie Fox has a command. Yeah. Like, Prod- Prodigy has one of those icy flows. Like, he, the shit that he says makes you. Yes, yeah, it's, it's sinister. Like, like and it's yeah. dope. It stands out. But it's, it just, even then, it's just, like, the best Prodigy verse. I don't know. It, it's the best Prodigy verse. I don't think it's better than the best Bumpy Knuckles verse. Oh, like, it might be it. equal. Yeah, thank you, Marquis. Yeah, I told you. I, I knew it, it was real nigga shit. That was the single. Yeah, damn, I, real nigga shit was hard too. Yeah, I, I, I was like, I'm sorry, I know that. I, I mean, but keep, keep it, keep it thorough. A, keep it thorough. Is a classic fucking right. Like it just, it just a prodigy was a bigger artist. Remember, they had Quiet Storm and all that shit too. Like you had all of that. It, prodigy released a solo at the perfect time in his career. Right, he did. Not a lot of niggas do that. And yeah. he delivered, you know. Yeah, because like, like I said, because the other HNIC albums, you know, they they they, they differ. They they low. They you know they differ in quality. It's definitely not. not the, the, second, the second one was dope. Yeah, I, the second I one was dope. It's cool. It's cool. It's not the same though. I feel like this. Um, and 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 it's crazy because I feel like um, if you was to give them two albums, meaning you say Industry Shakedown and then. Freddie Fox's second album, the, the album after that, uh, Connection. Yeah. And you, it, put, yeah. and you put Connection Head. Too. And you put Head, nigga, and, uh, HNIC 2 and HNIC 1. I feel like HNIC 2 was better than Connection. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. Connection, I felt like that was the yeah, baby. Yeah, and, I, and, I, I, and I, I feel like yeah, baby was better than connection. Like well, connection, connection. Was, but, but, but you know, that's actually that's actually a good that's actually a good comparison because uh, so I felt like Freddie Fox. I mean, he kind of lost some steam, although I mean, he was still good. But he was know. trying like the the production fell off on connection first of yeah. all, yeah. and then it's like the standout tracks were still fire, but he had too many. He couldn't manage. The the other songs like the average songs and he was trying too hard to I guess make a hit or something like he was reaching like it it like they ain't come on natural like like the average songs on industry shakedown kind of fit the theme better right like, the average songs on connection were just kind of like there on some like. Look, I'm gonna see if I could do this and see if it worked type shit. And this, nah, it didn't work. Yeah. It, it, Whereas, yeah, H and I C two gave you the it gave you the same shit that worked from part one, and it ain't try to do nothing different. Surprise, it still sound, it sounded different. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he wasn't, and, and, and that's the crazy part. I read a prodigy. Take it. I'd rather Prodigy regressed and still made a solid album. Bumpy was still spitting fire on that album, but as as far as making musically, that's where he lost it. Right. So it it goes back into the reverse. Do you, do you want a nigga spitting fire over 
trash production and just making songs that just don't work? Or do you rather have a nigga who he ain't spent he ain't spazzing out like he used to, but he can still give you a dope verse and make songs that are dope and give you some little consistency. The highs may be his high though. Mm-hmm. And and that's how their career kind of panned out. But I would say that that one moment Freddie Fox was just a little higher, a little better than Prodigy, and then the rest of his history, like we all look at Prodigy as a as, as upper echelon MC and legend. Freddie yeah. Fox just more remembered as a a dope underground legend that made a fucking classic. And then collab and then collab with John Cena on his John Cena's album. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Freddie Fox was still making collabs. Like he was on Tech Nine album. Mm-hmm. That was yeah. such a weird collab, by the way, Pat. John Cena and fucking Freddie Fox. Yeah, they're, they're, nice. I mean, not everything. That. Yeah. But I mean, but hey, I mean, I guess John Cena kind of respect. And truthfully, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, didn't he probably write that album too? I wouldn't be surprised. Some of it. I don't maybe. know about all that. Yeah. But, you know, but uh, hey, but hey, I mean, you get you you get your mainstream money where you get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know. But yeah, but, so I guess that's, this is good. Um, I mean, so it was fifty fifty. We split in half. Yeah. Like, yeah. But like I said, I mean, none of us are mad at either albums. Like I said, you know, nah. we, we think highly of both albums, both rappers. You know what I'm saying? You know, so like like I said, I mean, it, like I said, it, it was actually a treat just to listen to that shit. Cause I mean, I was just, I was doing ring gang shit when I was when I was when I was running all that shit back. Right, right. So I was like, damn, man, this shit took me back to my college days. I'm surprised Pilot picked that shit. Like, <laughs> I yeah. thought I'd be defending this shit by myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but hey, hey, man, if, hey, if we're splitting, uh, it's all good, man. You know, it's all good. Like I said, though. so yeah, like you know, if you haven't listened to any of those albums in a while, or you're curious to see why we hold, you know, both albums in the regard we do, yeah, man, you know, this technology is improved, man. Go to YouTube if you don't have, if not, you know, go to stores and get the album. I'm pretty sure they're in there, or go to Apple Music now or some shit like that. That's, that's, that's what these kids do, right? Yeah, Apple Music or some shit like that. You know, get their music. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, it's out there, man. So. So yeah, yeah, go yeah, go just just go listen. Now we're going to segue.